Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Build, and uh, welcome to the session on Store and Dev Center. My name is Mazar Mohammed. Um, I have been, uh, I'm a group program manager in the store team, and I've been with Microsoft uh, for over 20 years, and uh, 15 of those years at Microsoft, uh, I was a developer. And uh, I was watching the, uh, the keynote today, Dave Treadwell's keynote, where he told us the story of uh, AFD.sys. Um, I, I, I was a junior developer in the RPC team in NT. Uh, and I remember the story. My, my recollection is a little bit different. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure the F did not stand for freaking. Um, so let's get started. And by the way, I have uh, Zach here with me, and Zach is going to be doing uh, a part of the presentation. So uh, our store is getting bigger every year. We have uh, more apps, more daily downloads, more registered developers. Our mobile operator billing platform now has 57 MOs um, from MOs all over the world. So uh, I, have a, I have a little giveaway. So I thought I'd use this opportunity to, uh, to, to give this beautiful Nokia headset to uh, someone in the room. So um, if you have at least three apps in the store with ratings of three stars or above, can you please stand up? One. Yes. Two, three, four. OK, four people. How about four apps? Can you, can you please uh, keep, keep standing? Can you please keep standing? Anybody with four? OK, three people. Five. Six. Seven. <laughs> okay, uh, can, you, can you come by and show me your apps? <laughs> Can you, uh, there electronic you cards, nice. All right, there you go, you win. You. So uh, we, we, we see consistent growth across the board, uh, whether it is uh, the, the top apps, the, the apps that we consider as top of the top, top or, uh, um, or whether it's just the, the sheer breadth of applications. Uh, we're seeing uh, pretty healthy and, and consistent growth. Uh, our in-app purchase revenue has now reached a point where it is on par with our download revenue, our regular download-to-own revenue. And, and if you look at the trajectory, it's, it's going to be a very different picture next year. So before we get into the specifics of, uh, of what we did in the blue release, I just want to give you a very high-level picture of, uh, of where we're going longer term. Um, as a company, we've had multiple stores, and it's, a, it's a, in my opinion, an unfortunate thing. We've had uh, the Windows Store, the Phone Store, the Xbox Store. We have a Microsoft Store where we sell all of our devices and other things. And it was really a lot of redundant investments. Our stores didn't really talk to each other. We had inconsistent policies across the stores, and it was a source of, of, of pain to all of you. And we are on a path where we're going to fix this. We now have literally a single store team that is going to build the one big store uh, that has everything, you know, your Windows apps, your phone apps, your devices, games, services, digital content, mu music, videos, podcasts. And it's going to go as broad as possible. And I think this is going to benefit you, developers, because we will have a broad reach. We will be able to use this one store, the one big store, to build up a, 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 a customer base that is more highly monetizable. Uh, we can find more opportunities to connect the dots between 
a customer who's buying something, a device from our online store, uh, with a customer who wants to buy a particular app uh, in one of our, uh, our devices, on one of our, uh, for one of our devices. And, and that one big store is going to have device-optimized storefronts, it's going to have web-optimized storefronts, and it's going to have a deeper integration with the shell. And we're going to have a single dev center where you can submit your applications into this one big store. We also have this ongoing mission where we want to make sure that we create every opportunity possible for your apps to be discovered by customers. And this is not something that we're going to solve in one release. We're going to keep working on this every release. We want to make sure that we broaden the, the opportunities for monetization. And this includes investment on the customer side, where we keep increasing the number of payment instruments, we keep expanding our MO billing platform. We want to make sure that the friction associated with the purchase flow is as low as possible. Um, and sometimes it is not just about adding a payment instrument. It's also about optimizing the flow of a payment instrument. A great example is Alipay. We have Alipay. We have Alipay available in China. The problem is it's higher friction than it needs to be. And we're working on reducing the friction, reducing the number of clicks that a user has to go through before uh, they can purchase an app. And we've seen this with uh, just the data when we light up a, a mobile operator. Because of the reduced friction associated with not having to give your credit card, uh, we see a, a big jump in, uh, in, in the sales in any country that we go light up a, uh, a mobile operator in, in, in our MO billing platform. So <clears throat> more monetization opportunities on the customer side and also more ways in which you can monetize your application. A better ad platform uh, and other features that allow you to monetize more effectively. And then the third thing we, uh, we think of as a, an ongoing mission is reducing the friction. Reducing the friction associated with getting your apps into our store. Reducing the friction associated with getting your apps to our customers. So we, we have, we're not there yet. We've made some progress in blue. And now this one store team is, is charging on this, on, this, on this mission. So let's talk about what, what we've done in, in the blue release. We have unified our registration system. We now have a single developer registration. You register once, you pay once, you get vetted once. We have uh, one set of policies. We've unified our policies, so there's no inconsistencies in our policies between Windows and phone. We even have a single team now that actually certifies your application, so that removes some of the disconnects that you would see with just, you know, uh, associated with just human judgment uh, on these policies. We have a single developer platform. We're not going to get into that in this session. But the single developer platform allows you to reuse as much of your code as possible. And we have this notion of universal apps. And we'll get into that in a second. So let's walk through an example. We have Bernardo here in the room. He, he has another session later today. You should definitely attend a session. He has this app called Quizball. And uh, he has an app for Windows. And he has an app for Windows Phone. Uh, he was able to use over 90% of his code to reuse 90% of his code to, to build his Windows and, and phone app. And he has this, this durable in his, in his application, which allows users to you know, increase the, the limit of the number of simultaneous games that you can play. The good thing is, this is a universal app. And what that means for, for customers is that they buy this durable once, say on their phone, and now that durable is effective on, on, on Windows. So we don't require you to have a universal app. You can still have separate apps in Windows and Phone if you choose to do so. When you do have a universal app, your, your entitlements are shared between Windows and Phone. And your entitlements for your in-app items are shared between Windows and Phone. Now, again. For your in-app items, you could choose to have exclusive 
in-app items for Windows and, and phone. You could have some that are shared, and you can have some that are exclusive to a, a particular uh, platform. And of course, having a, a, um, a universal app allows you to uh, roam your settings, share your notification channel, uh, and so on. Um, now, I just want to call out a certain nuance here. You can have a universal project in Visual Studio and turn that into a universal app, and that's going to work. However, if you have, let's say, an existing Zap uh, in Windows Phone, and you've built a new app in Windows, you can still link those two apps and, and have some of these benefits. You can share entitlements across Windows and Phone by leveraging your existing investment, um, let's say, on Phone and, and linking it to your Windows app. And all, all universal apps have this little icon. Um, and, we, and if you get the, the blue build, you'll, you'll notice that we already have uh, a bunch of universal apps that are in the store already, and this list is going to keep growing. So now let's talk about app certification. So uh, you heard in the keynote today that um, uh, we, we uh, increased the speed of certification over 50 times. So let me give you a little more specifics. Uh, it, it used to be that the average certification time was about two days to five days. When, when things got really bad during the holidays, it, sometimes we went over our SLA and things got really painful for developers. Now it's actually less than an hour on average. It's less than an hour, and we are working on reducing the latency even further, as much as possible. Our bottlenecks right now are more around how we move our bits around internally and how, and how fast can we sign your application and how fast can we make your automated validation. The big bottleneck before was the human processes associated with certifying your application. And what we've done now is, for the way in, we've gotten all the humans out of, this, of the system. It's a completely automated process. Your app gets in as fast as possible. And then we have systems in place to monitor the activity associated with an application. We monitor for signals. We monitor for the output of the automated uh, uh, analysis. And, and then, if an app is noteworthy or high risk, we flag it, and then we go look at it in more detail if we have to. But what we've, what essentially what this lets you do is a developer who's been really good about submitting high-quality applications to the system gets the best experience possible. Now, this particular feature is 100% live for phone. So if you're a phone developer, you should, you should see this today. Do you like it, by the way? Yeah? All right. So uh, we're going we're gonna to do the same for Windows. Uh, it's, it's not going to happen immediately. We're working on it as fast as possible. We're going to roll it out as aggressively as possible. But it's going to take a little bit of time. But we're doing the same for Windows. Now let's talk about app discovery. So we've, we've made a few app discovery improvements in the blue release. Broadly speaking, uh, there's three categories that I'm going to talk about. We're going to talk about all the investments we've made in the user experience of the store so that your apps have more opportunities to be visible to customers. We'll talk about ways that you can, things that you can do to make sure that your apps are more visible to customers. So let's start with the store. And I'm going to invite Zach over to give us a demo. All right. Thank you so much, Muzzer. Thank you, Zach. For the intro. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Zach Woodall, and I am the lead program manager for our store shopping experiences teams for Windows and Windows Phone. I'm going to give you a little bit of a demo. Uh, but before I do, I just wanted to get an idea who's in the room, who I'm talking to. Uh, so, could I see a show of hands? How many people from Northern California in here? Let's say that's about maybe 30% of the room. Cool. How many have uh, an Android or iOS app in the room? 
Great, that's about half of the people. How about, how about Windows and Windows Phone? Uh, another about half of the people. All right, great. It's a, it's a broad cross-section of people uh, with varied opinions, I'm sure. Uh, as we go through this stuff, I'd love to have you reflect from your sort of personal background on the things that we've done. Uh, and, and form some opinions, ask, you know, some questions uh, that you can maybe raise at the end or uh, find one of us at the panel later uh, in, in uh, uh, tomorrow in the afternoon. Uh, all right, so uh, let's go ahead and move on to the demo. Uh, we don't want to spend too much time on PowerPoint, but I do have a, a, a just a quick a couple slides for framing. So uh, when we set out to work on Windows Phone Blue, uh, we did a bunch of research to try to figure out what it was that people really care about in an app store. Uh, and you know, it's common things, things you'd expect people to say, oh, I want it to be really easy to browse, right? Or, oh, of course, it has to have a large variety of apps available. I mean, what kind of app store would it be without that? Uh, easy to navigate interface, uh, you know, like, so you can actually find what you're looking for. Um, Specific apps, this is really important. You know, you have to have Instagram, people who rely on Instagram. Uh, and it needs to be kind of easy to use, you know, easy to get whatever it is from the internet and get it onto your device. Uh, so that's all fine. Uh, so we asked ourselves, well, do we feel like the store that we have meets that goal? Uh, and we launched the thing up, and we thought to ourselves, boy, this is really well organized, but where are the apps? The way that things are set up in a digital store doesn't need to be different from the way that things are set up in a physical store. Turns out this whole like shopping thing has been around for a very long time, and people actually know how to do it well. So when we look at and reflect on learnings from the industry, from things like you know, stores, grocery stores, um, you know, stores uh, that you might find just down on Market Street here, there are two different kinds of things that happen. There is this idea of task-driven uh, shopping, which is like, I have a thing. I need it. I want to go get it. It needs to be consistent and predictable the way that you fill that need. There, on the way to completing that need is the opportunity to create serendipity. So I didn't know that I was going to want a bag of chips and a candy bar, but I do now that I see them. Let's take those home, too. We wanted to embody that in our own store. Uh, and so we, th we think we've done that uh, in Windows Phone Blue. Uh, one more thing that we felt we absolutely have to do with this release is address top feedback. Uh, you guys are very vocal. You told us what you think. And we wanted to be sure that we, we took care of some of those things. Um, <clears throat> this is a sort of traditional marketing funnel. You know, People use different terminology for these things. But uh, the basics of it are at the top of the funnel, is where all the potential customers are. And at the bottom is the set of converted customers. These are the people that you actually got to attach to your application. So we reflected on, well, what is this model uh, it, you know, in, ref in um, uh, comparison to our store? Like, How do we think about the model in our store? And the conclusion that we came to is that there are two constituent parts. There is the storefront, which is responsible for this first part, the awareness and interest generation. This is really about, really about just getting people to become aware of, of, of the products you have to offer, not actually about the acquisition process. You know, you don't just buy the car that you see on the lot. You go and test drive the car. Like, you check it out. You know, you talk to the sales guy. You look online. You learn about the product. So this is really about awareness in the storefront. And let's talk a little bit about some of the changes that we've made in the storefront in Windows Phone Blue and uh, Windows Update in order to make that better. I'm going to switch over here to my, let's see, VGA2, doing some of my own AV work up here. First thing that you're going to see when you launch the store in Windows Phone Blue is apps, of course. Like, why didn't we do this last time? Of course, you should see apps, yes. The content that you see here, these are editorial features. Our editorial team looks at every app that gets submitted to the store. They consider it. They consider it for quality. They look at the ratings. They look at what people think, what they're saying in uh, the reviews. Uh, they consider download rates. Uh, and they look at the apps, and, they, and the ones that are really, really good, the top half a percent of applications, make it into a consideration set to be able to land on the start experience. The stuff at the top, 
Uh, you'll see this is the same for everyone in the market. We've got some editorial content, some features, all of these things in uh, a given country will be the same. Uh, they change on a, on a sort of a daily basis. Uh, but what you're going to notice uh, immediately below those is something entirely new to our store for Blue. This is a, a collection of applications. And if you have an Apollo phone, you may be familiar with the idea of collections. Uh, what we've done is we've taken them and we've brought them down from four layers deep in the user interface to right in the landing experience. But we haven't brought them all down. We've picked just the collections that you should see. From among hundreds of collections that have been pre-built by our editorial team and are constructed around a concept, an idea that is a, you know, like a human intuition thing, we pick the ones that are best for you. So we pick money and budget for me because I've been downloading uh, some money and budget related apps like Mint. And in this collection, you'll see we first blow out a teaser of the content that's available, and we give you the opportunity to dig in to get the full list <clears throat> of what's available in this collection. You're going to notice something immediately. Uh, at the top here is Mint. Mint was not in the list of apps that I saw here. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. We will select, uh, and we're still sort of toying with the number, uh, but you know, three, five of these collections to blow out and show on the start screen. This pairs the magic of Bing's intelligence system. They're the ones who know who you are. They know personally what you're interested in, and they're the ones that are connecting you to these collections with the, you know, the durable insight of human editors. If I scroll through this list, at the bottom, you'll see these are persistent collections. The editorial team has chosen on a per-market basis. Uh, they think that they're good for the now. They think that they're, uh, you know, maybe have some persi persistency for people, for example, who are new to Windows Phone, uh, such as getting started. Uh, or in today's collection, you'll see this better together group, which is about universal applications. One swipe to the right, these we call quick links. Um, these are the, the milk. These are the milk in the back of the store, the task that people came to accomplish. We think about the way that we've ordered these as the way that people are most likely to come in and see them, to come and access them. So the things that they need the most are topmost and leftmost. Featured changes on a daily basis. There's always interesting stuff in there, so we keep that near the top. Uh, top free. We always get asked about this. How do I get top free? How do I get top free? Top free games, top free apps. This is what I want. So we wanted to make that super easy, consistent, and predictable for people to find. It will always be here, one swipe to the right, just past the end cap. The, uh, the lists are designed to perform a particular function. One of the things that we heard from you guys was, hey, you know, this app store is really big. How do we get our apps discovered? And there are a lot of mechanics that are involved in app discovery. I and mean, you guys know uh, better than I do. You know, the cost of, you know, uh, you know, marketing and SEM and SEO and, like, trying to get people, you know, uh, get the word out on social networking. Uh, and all of those tools are necessary. Um, but we've tried to help a little bit by creating a promotion mechanic in our store. So what happens is when your app is new to the store and high quality, it can appear in the new and rising list. This is an algorithm. It's based on ratings, number of ratings, uh, uh, average rating as well as, oh, I had a little connection failure there. Uh, number of ratings, average ratings, as well as the, um, uh, the number of downloads. So we only look at stuff that was recently published in that list, or stuff that's been updated recently and improved. For the uh, top rated list, we look at stuff that has really high ratings, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to have a lot of ratings. So the combination of the fact that it's new and you're getting seen in these lists, uh, and then the opportunity that that creates can move you into the best rated list. Uh, over time, as you do really well in best rated, you can move into the top list. Uh, and this will get you the ratings and the downloads you need to be successful in the longer term. Uh, collections. 
What you're going to see in collections is a lot of what you're similar to in the past. We wanted to bring this down at the store level. Uh, very important to have the opportunity for people to get into this thing. It's a task that we know people uh, need to accomplish. Uh, and behind particular collections, we'll take the opportunity to feature content. So we have a little bit of flexibility in our layout now uh, that we did not have in the past. Uh, one swipe to the right of that, and this is also coincidentally one swipe to the left of the landing experience. This is the, uh, the for you the uh, personalized app recommendations. These are selected from the entire catalog of apps. So this is not just the top half a percent of applications, but this is everything. So the opportunity is broader for being able to mine things that you might be interested in. Uh, and these are the things that we think, uh, out of all of the catalog, uh, might fit bet for, best for you today. But if we're wrong, if we get it wrong, we have a way for you to tell us. So maybe I'm not interested in GPS voice navigation, I can say, not interested, slides out of the list, and we move forward. All right, let's take a look at a couple of things we've done in Windows. Switching over to DVI mini port seven. You already saw in Joe's keynote today, uh, we're pinning the store right to the taskbar by default in the update. Super important, people, need a way to know about your applications, to discover them. Uh, and we know that people engage with what they see. If I launch this store, you're gonna see, uh, right from the start, it's a much more content-dense experience. We've tried to optimize for mouse and keyboard to make this thing work really well for those users. Right up at the top, uh, the best example of this is the persistent navigation. You also saw Joe demo this a little bit. I want to walk through a, a little bit of what's in here. Uh, the top charts, these are going to be the same lists on Windows and Windows Phone because we want people to have that muscle memory. We want them to know, oh, yeah, it's new and trending that I like to go to to see what's going on today. Categories, you, this is just like in Windows Phone. It's a similar concept, similar categories. Uh, and for each one, I can individually dig in. And some will have more depth than others, like games, for example. I can see the full list of new feature that we have, app collections uh, for Windows. This is just the same as the collection feature that we built for Windows Phone. Uh, now we've brought it down to Windows. Uh, and I can get quick, quick access to my account information and my purchase history uh, right here. If I go back to the home, very important to have that recycling, you know, to give people the opportunity to do more shopping. Uh, you'll see that we've optimized the spotlight control. Spotlight control in the past, a little bit hard to navigate with a mouse. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. Uh, but we wanted to make it much more accessible. So we give you little previews of the content in the spotlight. You can sort of click through these things. Uh, each one of them uh, is an editorial uh, choice. So we, you know, same process as Windows Phone. We choose this content from the best in the catalog to bring forward. Uh, and just below it, we have editorially featured collections for today. Uh, you can see in here, actually, we've got some interesting things. We've got getting started, uh, better together, uh, red stripe deals. So the red stripe deals, um, you may be familiar with this concept, is actually sales. Uh, and we've done some work. Uh, to make it more obvious to people that these are sales. You strike through the price. Uh, people love to see you know, the red strike through on a price tag on, on the racks. This really influences people's behavior. Uh, you can see not only do we show it there, if I load one of these sales, you'll see it directly in uh, the details page for the application. If I run back to the home, another collection we have the better together, Skulls of the Shogun, one of our applications that's uh, universal and uh, featured today. Uh, notice that this is a free trial. So we do some work to optimize what we're going to show people, because we want to show them the most important thing at any given time. And we've decided that people really like free trials, because it affects the cost of the thing. So we're showing that instead of the indicator for universal in the list. But if I click on it, we clearly describe this is a universal application. We tell you what that's for. Down here, just below the application, we explain what this says. All right. I'm going to move forward to app details. Uh, now, remember, app details is the second part of your evaluation for product. This is where you actually decide if you're going to purchase the thing. 
So what we wanted to do when we reflected on how we wanted app details to work is we wanted to simplify it down to what is the essence of things that people need to know in order to make the choice about whether or not to acquire. You know, it turns out applications are not cars. People don't need to reflect for you know, three months on which one they're going to buy. Most of the time, the investment is not that big. But there are some key criteria that matter. And those criteria include the publisher, the title, the, uh, the price, the rating, the number of ratings. These things all matter. People look at this stuff. They need a description. They need to know what this app is about. And they need to be able to see the screenshots for the application. For apps and games, this is very different. Some uh, games, in particular, very important to have screenshots. For apps, it's the description most of the time. So let's flip back over to our phone demo and take a quick look at what we have in app details. Uh, I'm going to search up the same app we were just looking at. So skulls of the Shogun. First thing you see when I pull this up, sure enough, universal indicator for skulls of the Shogun here. Uh, we're not showing the, the live tile indicator in the phone. Um, I'm sorry, the trial indicator in the phone, uh, because that's a, different, that's a different feature functionality in Windows than it is in the phone today. Uh, these, are, these are areas where we're looking to uh, bring our behaviors closer together still. What you do see uh, is the same indicator. Same indicator, same kind of placement near the price. That's really important, because the user promise that we're making is you're going to get this on both if you buy it on one. So we want to bind it to the price. Uh, and you'll see the other things that I talked about. Price, who's the publisher, the title, uh, the short description, uh, and the screenshots for this application. Those are all of the things that are left on the overview section of details. Now, the rest of it is here. And if you swipe to the right in details, this is where the rest of the content is. Uh, and it includes a description of what makes this app universal. What does that mean? What does it mean to be a universal application so people can understand? Uh, we've also added the ability for you to provide uh, release notes and uh, a link back to your own website in the details. Uh, these are features that you asked us for. And people care about what other people think, which is why we've broken out the reviews section into a histogram. Some apps are polar. You know, some people love it, some people hate it. We want people to love, uh, to know what they have, to, to love their experience with uh, Windows Phone. And in order to be able to do that, they have to be able to understand what they're getting into. Uh, this particular application, uh, not only uh, is it actually rated pretty well, uh, but it turns out it has some good reviews that have been written. And we want to give those reviews an advantage. We want to give them an opportunity to stand out. So people uh, can vote. People, anyone, anyone on the Windows phone can say, was this helpful, yes or no? I, you know what, this is a really long, good review. That was helpful. It says, thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, for telling us that this was helpful. And then the default sort of reviews becomes what is most helpful. You as a developer probably also care about currency of reviews. So I want to see what's happening right now. I want to see what the latest reviews are. That people, so you can go in here and you can change the sort uh, and that, that, uh, get that information. The last pivot related. This is really the same as Apollo. A couple more things I want to tell you about, and then I'm going to jump off the stage so that Muzzer can, uh, can continue. Step through our, let's see, demo slide. We talked about that. Uh, top feature requests, apps on SD. Holy cow. The Lumia 520, this hugely successful device sold in, in lots of places around the world. This device does not have very much storage. If you install Halo on this device, you can't update it because there's not enough leftover storage. But if you get an SD card and you put it in there, you install Halo on the SD card, it unlocks a world of possibility. Now you have all the storage you need for as many apps as you could want. Turns out uh, this was a you know, highly requested feature. Really uh, pretty straightforward implementation. It's in phone settings, as you would expect. Uh, it has uh, a notification, actually, if you're kind of running out of storage on your device. We'll say, hey, do you want to start moving apps over to the SD card, uh, which is just kind of a convenience. You have control over whether people can put your app on an SD card or not. Some apps have sensitive or private information. It's not uh, good to be stored out, out there. Auto updates, right? Yes, of course we should do this. 
Do you guys like auto updates? Yes, yes, okay. A little bit of a clap. Uh, one of the <laughs> it's on by default. Uh, one of the things that we heard, though, uh, from developers was that there needed to be a way for users to know that you were adding value to your applications. So although it's on by default and we respect the user's data plan by only downloading updates over Wi-Fi by default, but this is an option that can change, uh, we still needed a way to tell them that you were delivering value to them. So we fire notifications. And we didn't want to do this in a messy way. That would be really irritating. So what we do is we batch them up. So periodically, like once a day, we'll fire a notification that says, hey, six apps are updated. And when you tap on that notification, it takes you to a new scene in the store that is the download history. And you can see the order in which those apps were updated. And you can always go and see when that happened. Sometimes, I don't know if you guys have noticed on your uh, Windows Phone 8, sometimes downloads get stuck in the download queue. And this uh, system will also notify uh, a user if their app has not been downloaded for some reason. If, for example, you haven't connected to Wi-Fi uh, because we pushed them off to Wi-Fi by default. There's also this great force update check button. How many people wanted that? <laughs> yes, no, I don't know. Very popular, very popular with a short list of people. All right, my apps. Uh, this one is deceptively powerful. Uh, well, so what is it really? You know, it's purchase history. You can see that I've been playing facial game for girls a lot, apparently. <laughs> my daughter is on the same Windows Live account. Um, so uh, I should say Microsoft account. Um, you can view and reinstall past purchases. Of course, that's good. By default, we just show you the ones that aren't on your device. Uh, Windows Store purchases that are universal show here, so that's good. Uh, and um, clicker, click. Uh, it gives us the opportunity to be able to show you which was the one that you had. When you're looking back through the lists, you know, and you're kind of like, oh, I thought I had one of these. Which was the flashlight app that I had? It shows you which one that you had previously, uh, which is nice. That's, a, that's kind of a nice detail. Uh, this is good, right? I don't know. Did you, are you guys, I see a couple of thumbs up back there. Do you guys know about this? Yes, the buy button. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, but this is really the most powerful part of this, is that I kind of alluded to this earlier. We no longer feature you apps that you already own. Because that's just a waste of space. We're trying to create this serendipity to expose people to ideas that they don't already know about. So we don't want to feature you things that you have. Last thing we did, uh, this seemed kind of obvious. We just kind of didn't get quite there in Windows Phone 8, but I'm glad that we got it done in blue. So uh, in-app purchase, uh, you guys, some of you may be familiar with this application. Uh, if I choose to buy and my phone is oriented to landscape mode, hey, in-app purchase is in landscape mode. It was weird, really weird that it went back to, uh, to the other orientation portrait. Muzzer. Thank you, Zach. Go clicker. So uh, as you can see, uh, we made a slew of improvements in the store client. Thank you. Uh, we made it possible for your apps to be discovered more often. We added this notion of segmentation of users so that the, the user base can be divided up into a whole bunch of segments, and then we can curate many lists of applications to these segments. That's going to give your apps more opportunity to be noticed by our users. And we made recommendations more visible. So for those long tail of applications that are really uh, interesting to a, a, set of, a specific set of users, they're going to notice it more often because it's going to be more visible, more visible uh, in the store experience. So now let's talk about some other ways in which you can get your app to be discovered. So the Bing team has added a way to link your apps to search results. This works in Windows today. It's going to be available in Windows Phone. And essentially, what we noticed is that most of our users, when they want to complete a task, they start by doing a search. So what we wanted to do was to make sure that your apps were involved in that process of completion of a task. 
So um, what, you, what you can do here, there's a whole session dedicated to this, by the way. And Evan is, should be in the room here somewhere. And, uh, Evan is right there. So if you have any specific questions uh, uh, after the session, you can talk to him or you can attend a session. Really four simple things. Uh, you need a website. You need to link your app to a website. There's a specific markup that you need to do, and Evan will get into that in his uh, session, or it's uh, that link that, that's at the bottom of the page. It should be live tomorrow morning, I believe. Um, you need to enable your app for deep linking so that when that search result is uh, selected, your app can get invoked with the appropriate context. And your, your app needs to be registered uh, with the Bing uh, Webmaster Portal. You follow these four steps. You have a website. You have the appropriate pages with the appropriate markup. And now you can hook into the built-in search for phone and, and on Windows and really significantly increase the, up, the, the, the opportunity for, uh, for your app to be noticed by the users. And now let's talk, talk about another um, feature that we built in, in Blue to empower you to make sure to get your apps to be noticed uh, by, um, by users. So we, uh, we added a feature in, in the Dev Center to allow you to promote your application in other applications. So, so this has two benefits. As a, a, a developer who is using the Microsoft Ad Control, your uh, fill rate is going to go up because apart from getting your regular inventory, you're going to get these ads from other developers for their applications in, uh, in your app. And as a developer, you have another opportunity to make sure that your app can get noticed uh, by users. We make it really convenient. You can set up a campaign from inside Dev Center, and you can watch the progress of your campaign right from inside Dev Center. Here's another feature that a lot of you have uh, asked us for. Uh, there are many instances where users um, leave bad reviews when they may not have understood what the problem was. There are many times when the user leaves a great written review, but the star rating is wrong, where they leave a one star rating because they were just confused and they say, great app. And really, the, the, the developers had no way to mitigate this. And so we've made it really simple. Uh, in the Dev Center, this feature is going to go live real soon. Um, Right from inside the Dev Center, you, you have access to, you already have access to your reviews, but now you have this extra link that allows you to respond to a specific user um, and really get them to correct uh, your review. The user, so you can keep track of which reviews you've responded to, and the user gets an email, and the email has uh, links for them to either uh, respond back to the developer or uh, update the review. And we added a couple more things. Um, in, in, in the registration system, we had a fair amount of friction in the registration process, especially with international developers who did not have credit cards. So the additional credit card check that we had really caused a lot of pain to a lot of developers. So we've removed that check. We've also, uh, we used to have registration um, using PayPal in Windows Phone, but then when we, when we unified the registration systems for uh, Windows and Windows Phone, we actually regressed on this specific feature. Uh, we did not have PayPal as a payment instrument. Uh, we were able to add that back, so now you have PayPal uh, in the unified registration system uh, for the store. So in summary, we are unifying our stores. We've had many stores that didn't quite talk to each other. We're going to have one big store that's going to sell more things to more people 
it's going to connect the dots, it's going to expand the user base, the addressable market, and we're going to use that opportunity to build a larger install base of monetizable customers. And we have this ongoing mission to uh, keep increasing your monetization options, uh, keep reducing the friction associated with you submitting your app, reducing the friction associated with customers buying your application, and, um, and provide more ways in which customers can find your application. And that's, that's all I had. My email is mazram at microsoft.com. Feel free to send me an email anytime. I'm happy to get your feedback. And we have um, a few of these sessions that uh, I invite all of you to attend. Thank you. Want to take some questions? Can, can the store team please come forward? <laughs> well, we, yeah, we Go ahead. Yank you from the crowd. I so the, the slide that I had around our vision for the big store. It's going to have a roadmap associated with it. Our immediate priority is Windows, Windows Phone, and Xbox, and some of the Windows services. So if you are a service developer, let's say, uh, who is writing an iOS app but using Windows services. So that's our immediate priority. I see no reason to have multiple stores as a company. It's, it's a matter of when, really. Go ahead, back there. So, uh, my, my question is about the SD card. Uh, is there any notification from the uh, platform when the user plug in or eject the, the SD card? Uh, no, uh, there, you mean to your application? Is that what you mean? Uh, yeah, the, uh, can the, uh, my application receive the notification? Uh, this is a really good question. Uh, why don't you come up afterward, uh, and we'll connect you with the right guys in our developer platform team, and they can help answer your question. Okay. All right. Do you, do you guys mind running to the uh, the microphones? Yeah, so that, that might be easier. The room can hear your question. Um, yeah. So I, my question is in regards to. Uh, the quality of apps in the ecosystem. Um, I know, you know, just recently there were a bunch of Google apps that were that weren't actually from Google removed. Can you guys discuss, you know, the ongoing process to clean up the stores so it's more quality? Yeah, in fact, the what we noticed. So one of the reasons, one of the motivators for us to switch over from the system we had to the system we, we're now going towards is all of the investment we made to proactively certify your applications was actually not paying off because you had uh, most of the pain associated with applications was either around uh, situations where people had dynamic content or, uh, or there was app clones and things like that which really caused a bad experience to customers. And any amount of proactive manual testing would really not have caught those situations. So instead, what we're doing is really making the path in as fast as possible, but investing a lot of energy in really looking at the overall ecosystem of apps and, and the health of our catalog to see what is the visible catalog, what are the apps that are, that are seeing activity, and what is that good activity or bad activity, and our developers just a small set of bad developers gaming the system and trying to gain an unfair advantage. And so that is the general area in, in which we are investing. I, I, it's going to be an ongoing mission. And I, you know, as, as we keep moving the bar, there's going to be people who are going to find more loopholes, and we just have to keep getting better at this. So there's a couple of questions that I have. The one is, um, 
It seems like the, 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 the statistics on the site are always a, like three or four days behind the metrics on the store when you're looking at how the people are downloading your app. Is there any way that that can be improved so we can get something from yesterday instead of from three days ago? Um, yes, it is, it is a source of pain, and I acknowledge that it is... Um, it has been a, a problem, and we, it is top of mind for us. There is essentially, well, the, the, the fundamental problem is we have these different systems in which, uh, which, which, uh, through which your transaction is flowing, and then the data is, is, is flowing back. And uh, each hop usually ha is, is, a, is a source of failure or latency. And uh, it's... It's not something we are going to fix overnight, but it is definitely a top of mind issue for us. And the, the other question I have is, is I'm really interested in, in seeing better metrics overall on the site. So, for example, one question that we have is, is it okay for us to stop working on the Windows 8.0 version of our app and just concentrate on 8.1? But there's no way to tell how many of our downloads are running on 8.0 and how many on 8.1. The only place we can actually see that is on the rating. We can see someone gave you a rating and you can see the OS that they were on when they gave the rating. So that kind of, and, and there are some statistics here, it's true, but they're, they're kind of confusing, and, and, and uh, the, of the three platforms, the, the Google Play Store gives the best graphing and so on. Is there, is there anything that we can do to make this easier to use and easier to understand and get things in one place? Um, it will make it a lot easier to evaluate how your app is doing and where you need to, where you need to go. Thanks for the feedback. Yes, we are making a big investment in analytics. In fact, uh, I don't know if any goes in the room, but we have a, a, a team full of people dedicated to making that better. We're just not there yet, but yes, it is definitely a, a priority for us. Yeah, that's true. You just need to ex export it, I believe, yeah. before you uh, pivot it. Uh, where is the integration for the uh, Office Store? Because there's lots of companies, including mine, uh, that make add-ins for PowerPoint, Word, Excel, um, templates, etc. cetera. Um, and it is, I find it very, very difficult to find any contact or um, email address to how to get your apps, your add-ins that are full-fledged big add-ins, some of them uh, that I have, into the Microsoft Office Store. The Office Store has no real connection with this at all. Yes. So where is the status of the Office Store? Um, and can you direct me to somebody who can guide me on how to get my apps, my add-ins, into the Office Store easily and quickly, not like all this red tape? Yeah, unfortunately, the right people are not there, but if you meet me after the uh, session, I, I will direct you to the right person. Um, as I said uh, before, uh, Office, relatively speaking, has not been, in, in terms of unifying, has not been a, a, uh, the, the high order a, a, a priority. Though I, I, I welcome your feedback, if, if, there, if, this, if, if you think that we are wrong in our prioritization, then I, I would love to get your feedback. Mm -hmm. Initially, unifying Windows, Windows Phone, Xbox, and services, and the Microsoft Online Store has been our priority uh, for, for building out that big store that, that, that sells everything to everyone. The Office Store it was small enough and localized enough, and it's, and it's, it's a problem that we did not think that it was an immediate priority. But again, I'd love to get your feedback. Okay. And I'll connect you with the right people. On, on the new um, 8.1 store, are the reviews that are shown to the consumers still separated by country? Or is it like a global review system now? No, it's still separated by country. Yeah. One of the things that we're about to light up that I did not demonstrate is uh, we will show you the device from which the review is submitted. Sometimes it's the case that if you have, uh, for example, a low memory device uh, and a high, you know, high memory requirement game, uh, you might end up getting some poor quality ratings. Uh, and you as the developer then can go back and reflect and say, oh, wait, 
like all of these people have got a Lumia 520, like maybe there's something I could do in profiling my memory or something that would make it better. Thanks. Could we go back to the app certification times? For sure. Just you had said it's on average it's gone down to you know an hour or less. Yeah. Um, folks that I've been talking to from the developer community on the Windows Phone side have been saying that's not their experience. They're still seeing several days or more. You know, every time you see that on phone, I want you to send me an email. Okay. Because I, I would love I to know why that's happening. Yeah. It should not be happening. Okay. No, I'll, I'll talk to you after. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And, and, and in, in general, the only time you see those atypical latencies is if your app gets flagged because our, our systems detected that this, this particular submission is high risk enough that we want to flag it at submission. There, we don't want to actually let it through. Example so, that I saw even suggested it relative to app updates that they so were how, waiting on. When, when was this? He tweeted me about 20 minutes ago. 20 minutes ago. Okay. So <laughs> I'll, I'll see you after. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. And, and, and again, send me an email with your app, app name, and I will respond to every, every instance of this. OK. Uh, I have two questions. <laughs> First one is about connection of advertisement, like AdWords, Microsoft, Ads, MSN Centrum with installs, because we have applications which are, which are running on a lot of platforms, including iOS, uh, Windows, desktop, and so. So when we create, uh, for example, SCM marketing or banner campaign, it's targeted to all platforms. And when the user comes, we have, for us, it's really critical to know how much installs of our application we did from which source. And right now, we can see, send this user to, to store, mm -hmm. and we see that we have some number of installation. <laughs> and I am definitely don't know if these users are from these in-application campaigns, or it's from Bing, or from Google, or something else, yeah. television ads. So, so the, the particular feature that you are pointing towards is, is what we call as affiliate marketing programs. And there's a certain set of features that are required um, and a certain amount of telemetry that needs to flow through the entire system to, uh, to, to light up that scenario. Mm -hmm. um, we were not, I mean, this, this was one of the things we wanted to accomplish in the build wave, uh, sorry, in the, in, the, in the blue wave. We were not able to fit that in, but it is top of mind for us. There's a certain amount of telemetry that needs to flow through the system end to end to, to really have that kind of tracking for both discovery through the link and conversion, which is really what you need because you, you want to have a, a, a cost per install sort of a, a, a referral model. OK, and second is about you, you mentioned uh, the automated, automated uh, approval of application. If you have an app application which need, for example, access to our service or some special kind of hardware, uh, is this application go get to store also in this few hours time, or it stop and uh, and continue in let's say normal slowly way of approval. So, so the way typically the system works is we uh, we build out a reputation for your application and 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 for you as a developer. And we uh, the the higher your reputation, the less likely we're going to interrupt your submission flow. So if you have had a track record of, of submitting, and also, by the way, if you're a brand new developer and your, your app is going to be completely unnoticed by anybody, you're going to go through too. It's only when we become interesting that we also care. Uh, so, um, so yes, the, the, high, the higher your reputation, the, the more likely you're not going to have any problems getting through the system. Yeah. OK. Thanks. Yeah, hi. I was just wondering, uh, really cool to have the ability for developers to answer uh, reviews that were negative and all that. I was just wondering, does that just happen in the dev center, or does it actually get published so that everybody can see the, the discussion about it? Uh, for, for now, uh, we're only doing it in the, uh, the dev center. Uh, but we're interested in the feedback. Um, is this something that you would like to be able to do, post your response publicly? You know, I could see reasons for doing it either way. Maybe, maybe an option. It is cool. not available. That way, people to me. know that you care and you yeah. you replied. Maybe you're working to address it. 
or maybe in some cases you just want to handle it privately. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Hello. Uh, first, I support this uh, idea as well. Uh, I think it's good for the entire public to see what your responses are because often users will be asking questions or they cannot figure out something and I can reply publicly before I can fix the problem. Mm -hmm. um, so my question is, uh, can we expect uh, soon to have several channels in the store for a single app where I would have an alpha build, beta, and production build and the ability to promote a build from my beta channel into production and maybe even if I'm able to publish my new production build to a subset of my users so that through my own analytics I can uh, do some A-B tests. Mm -hmm. uh, today it feels very uh, simple. Uh, I'm wondering if we, in the next year, we can expect improvements there. We are definitely working on a system that allows you to really control the scope of distribution of your application. It is not going to come in the next couple of months. It is a fairly complicated change. Uh, it is going to require uh, a fair amount of uh, work to, to enable the scenarios that you talked about. So to, to the specific scenarios uh, is you said you want to be able to do A-B testing. You want to be able to promote your beta application into production application and, and really control the scope of distribution of your application. Yeah. Um, they are all scenarios, really top scenarios, driving our priorities for the, for the next wave. And as you saw in the last wave, we don't just you know, build for a year and ship at the end of the year. We, we have rolling releases that allow you to kind of benefit from some of, especially when the innovations are service only. We, we, we have a monthly cadence of releases where we can sh ship out some of this functionality. But yeah, th those changes are, uh, are f fairly complex. So it's going to take some time before we roll those out. OK. It's on the list. It is on it's the on list, the absolutely. List. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, OK. So my question is about uh, the SD card supporting for uh, Windows 8.1 now. Uh, this app can only be uh, installed in the system drive. So we are just wondering when uh, you are going to support it. Uh, it's a good question. I mean, we're not saying anything about it today, uh, but for now, it's just going to remain uh, the way it is in the update. So uh, there's no timeline for there's, it? There's no timeline yet. OK. All right. If, if that's all the questions, uh, thank you all very much. We'll let you go on to your next session. Thank you very much.